my final bid. Um, what are the title again? Secrets of Great Companies. Secrets of Great Companies. One of my mentors said, you don't have to be big to manage your company well. You don't have to be big to live well or to be well organized. But you have to be well organized to be big. Some people think that, oh no, when we become um, a big company, that's when we will start doing some things correctly. No, it doesn't happen like that. You have to do things correctly, which leads you to being a success. And because you are a success, you continue to do things correctly. Now, Mohamed may remember one of these statements from before. How I would say, only great people are investigated of their past. Only great people are investigated of their past. Only great people are investigated of what did you do in your early days? We spoke earlier and said we want to find ways to exist in the next 200, 300 years. So it means that there are things we must do today that are going to help us to do that. I bought a book some years ago. I remember very well I had a trip to Devon. I did my uh, higher, whatever, what, my, 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 my first presence in the university in Devon. And then some years later when I went back, I went to one of my favorite bookstores and I got this book. The title of the book was How to Manage One Million Dollars or Less. How to Manage One Million Dollars or Less. And which means that even if you have one dollar, how can you manage one dollar? How can you manage a thousand dollars? How can you manage ten thousand dollars? How can you manage ninety thousand dollars up to a million dollars? So I said, this title looks interesting. How to manage a million dollars or less. Now listen to this. Life will always go to the level of your mind. If you are earning a thousand bucks, and you can manage it correctly. That is your level. If I give you 10,000, you will blow up the 9,000. By the time you are meeting with 1,000, that's when you become conscious of the money that is there. <laughs> because your mental level is 1,000 pula. So whenever you see 1,000 pula, you become conscious, you become aware, I need to manage things. Everything you have is a proof of your capacity. Is a proof of your capacity. Everything you have is a proof of your capacity. I don't want to give examples that I have rub it out, but think more. Everything you have is your capacity. There are people who can't handle a relationship. That's why they are not married. They they just they are too emotional. When a guy is doing something, he says, I will break up with you. That's their first statement, I will break up with you. I will leave you. There are people who are too negative in their minds that even when somebody loves them, they will keep on saying, you don't love me. They will keep saying, you don't love me the way I want to be loved. They just have, there are people who think that if you are in a relationship, you must be cheated. In fact, they say all men are threats. <laughs> they say all men are threats. If a man is not cheating on you, they say, hey, you better be careful. <laughs> they say it, it's in their genes. I was at my barber the other day. I cut my hair every Thursday. I was at my barber the other day and when I got there, I found some guys talking. So this guy made a barber shop. It's not a saloon, it's a barber shop. The barber shop is just for men. 
and then probably some of the women who have shot them, they are cutting them and all of that. So it was just us. And I found a conversation going on. And these guys were talking about how it is a man's nature to cheat. <laughs> and one of them said, hey, yeah, yeah. But say, you have I said, bang, bang, what are you man? But I don't know how to try to get a or something like that. And I was like, yeah, I know. When I was done around, I can't get you to come on. But I will say, ah, 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 it's because our grandmothers, it's because our grandmothers nearly stay home mothers. So only the grandfather would go and work. So if the grandmother has ten children, and back then never 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 when I never never ten, and then when I hear I am not going to work, I'm The quality of any organization, the quality of any person's life can never be different from the quality of that individual's mind, and can the quality of an organization can never be different from the quality of the ideas of an organization. See, you better count yourselves blessed, because what this young man is doing, having to call you for a meeting like this, is not heard everywhere. Trust me, believe you me, I've done meetings for big corporations. They will rather give themselves in high places bonuses than to pay someone to come and empower you. I'm telling you, what he's doing is over commendable. For him to call and say, Coach, please make time, come and talk to our people. It's not that some companies don't do it at all. Some companies don't do it. They just think motivation for what? He's willing to take me out of my schedule and say, Come and talk to our people. The other time the group was bigger than this, now he narrowed it to a few. Why? Because he wants to increase your mental capacity. Your mental capacity determines your output in life. You can never get results more than your mental state. As he's sharpening your mind right now, when we later on in the afternoon, we are discussing after this, our minds now see better. When you are going back to your various stations, you are going back with a different view. Oh, so this is where we are going. One day, something can be called for Zambia. Oh, maybe I can be the one for, for Namibia. Maybe I can be the one for this. Oh, the future of education is in home learning. You know, talking about that, you all better go and study this. Because in America, they are big on home learning. That is, children like my children, they don't have to go to school. All they do, just like children can register to write an exam through you, uh, rewriting, re and they are not in any school, and you are tutoring them. Now, it will not be tutoring those who are retaking. It will be a child that is writing standard seven while they are doing standard five. And they register and you are their teacher. So schooling is going to be bigger than premises that you, you hire. It will be as long as I can teach you where I can teach you. Say for example, please close the door. Say for example, uh, President Masses' daughter. Even now you are traveling around, it's not a school. Curriculum is different now. You have to go to school and you are traveling with your parents. Now it means that there has to be a different way of schooling. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. People like me, I'm not comfortable with my children going to school. I wish there was. Uh, 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 I can do that. That my children now are taught from home. When I want to go for a vacation with my children, I don't have to say to be told they have missed class. I can go anytime. And while they are there, they, 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 you have given them their assignments for the week. So we are in a vacation, go Kasanegwa, and we are doing whatever. And it's just meet term. What the government schools they are calling a term, it's meet term. Now we are busy playing. And the children are 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. And then while my child is doing standard five, I register them to write uh, standard seven. And then they pass standard seven. While they are doing form one, I register them to do form three. And then they pass form three. And then while they are doing form four, I register them to do form five. And then my child finishes form five at the age of 40. By 15, they are at the university. And I take them to a university outside here where they do four years for a degree. If you take them to South Africa, they are doing BCom or whatever. BCom takes three years. So if you start at 15, by 18, they are a degree holder. By 19, they finish their master's degree. By 22, they have a PhD. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not found in many companies to bring their employees and say, let's increase our mental capacity. These presentations are to sharpen your mind so that when you think, you think beyond where you are. Mm -hmm. The quality of your mind, the quality of your ideas can never be better than the information or the knowledge at your disposal. Yes, sir. You see, when you live here, even if you forgot everything I said, you will remember the wall. <laughs> he said there is a wall. There is Mohammed, there is Ajani, there is Poncho, there is Megdi. You will remember the wall. When you live here, in fact, tomorrow when you pass by somewhere and they are doing uh, match tutorials and you hear them saying 4x plus 2x you remember that i'm an x my value i'm an x my value determines my contribution in any environment the quality of your ideas in any platform can never be greater than the information at your disposal now you understand, I'm not just a part of cricket. No, I'm an integral part. Mwemedi can't do this at home. Mwemedi is just as useful as a journey, as sponsor, as Mwemedi. We are all needed. When we operate by the right principles, the right tools that glues us together, then we become a great world <clears throat> that can never be brought down. The extent of your vision determines the boundaries of your success. That is, what can you see? A good story. I hope I will say it as it, um, I, I, I read it the other day. It, it is the story of um, um, Walt Disney. Maybe you remember it, maybe you don't. Know. Sounds like the the, 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 the the soundtrack of one of my games on my phone. <laughs> are you playing the game? They are calling you. It's an alarm. Alarm. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to be waking up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me set my alarm in fact so that I don't overshoot my time. Right? I got a little bit of time here. We shall. We supposed to be done by one o'clock. Extend. Yeah, why extend? Well, let me just put one now. At least when it rings, I'll know I'm about to round up. That will be safer for me that way. What was I talking about? The extent of your vision determines the boundaries of your success, right? That is what do you see. Now, as to give you the story of Walt Disney, right? Walt Disney. Walt Disney. This is the story of Walt Disney. One day, he had bought a big field. So one day, he sat on a bench, and then the gentleman who was uh, cutting the, the trees and all of that, he saw him sitting down in a bench, and he was looking in the atmosphere. And so this gardener comes and asks, Mr. Disney, is everything fine? He said, everything is fine. He was looking. So he was asking, sir, what is happening? He said, I can see a mountain over there. 
This year, men tried to look. There was no mountain. <laughs> it's just trees. There was no mountain. And then Mr. Disney now put it that we are going to build a mountain here that is going to be working like this, like this, like that. And then he passed on before the mountain was built. On the day it was dedicated, one of the young men who was not there at the time that he had the vision, he said, today is a great day for Disney World. It is so unfortunate that Mr. Disney did not live long enough to see this um, development. But we are glad that uh, Mrs. Disney is here to come and do the, uh, whatever the cuttings of the ribbons and all of that. And then Mrs. Disney was welcome. She went to the podium. When she got there, she said, well, let me make a point of correction <laughs> before I continue. The young man said Mr. Disney was not here to see this development. Truth be told, Mr. Disney was the first to see this development. <laughs> he may not be here, but he was the first to see it. Now, life goes in the direction of the invisible. Yes, sir. <coughs> what we don't see with our optical eyes is where life is going. Yes, sir. I did a presentation with some of my protesters some years ago. You know what the title of the presentation was? Mm -hmm. Ideas rule the world. Ideas rule the world. Mm -hmm. See, you can't see ideas with your human eyes. Mm -hmm. You can't see them. Mm -hmm. When the world wakened up to the power of ideas, they introduced what they call IP. Intellectual property. What is intellectual property? Intellectual property is the value for ideas. Mm. This is my idea, my <laughs> concept. I must be paid for my idea. Mm. Intellectual property now comes to where people can write books. We have written some books. When you write a book, you are given money on your mental property. Now, they came up with another word. They call it brain child. Brain child. Intellectual property. What is brain child? Just like in the natural world, a baby is conceived or a woman conceives a child nurtures the child for some months, right? Mm -hmm. And then gives birth to this child. So we say, it's your child. Your mind must conceive things. And then you give birth to these things and you say, it's my brain child. Yes, sir. Are you getting? Yes, sir. So this is the child that was conceived in my, my brain. And then I gave birth to this. So now it's my brain child. So if I conceive a water business, by the time I conceive this idea, nobody's seen it. You see, some years ago, it was unheard of for somebody to be selling water in a bottle. In fact, if you're drinking bottled water, we're wondering, how do you enter a shop and buy water? <laughs> Metabeso was everywhere. You know, also, I don't like it happened later on because I remember me and my cousin, the return of it's more cooking and then a very time I come out again. Rao no seduko. We did that and it was allowed. And then later on, near how if but water it is back up with her heart, how much of it's on one other Tarakanya and our time it's more than never, never what has. When you conceive an idea, nobody sees it. Now, can I use you again? <laughs> How many of you have seen Nara's baby girl? Now, you can't see the girl, right? Mm -hmm. The baby is conceived and is being nurtured. Again, mm -hmm. we don't see the baby with our eyes. The baby, we 
can say is not visible to our eyes. Me how you go spend the long way? On a limit, she never had to tell you this. But all over the area, when you can see that the whole of my king on us, no, no, so like it. I swear, more like a lie. I reckon pink, I reckon blue, never a queer way. More yellow, way yellow, yeah. Because yellow, I'm a caraca pinky. I'm at the Namusiman. In now, Musiman, or a great pinky, come out at the end. In night, ah, I said, I said, now listen to this. Vision is based on the ideas you conceive. Secrets of great companies. The ideas you conceive. Now, why was I talking about the conception of a baby? Because when you conceive a baby, I want us to be, I can remember who I wrote one so we don't mind talking in certain ways. I guess. When you conceive a baby, you don't conceive in public. It's a private matter. Now, I'm using this in the business sense so that you can understand. It's a private matter. This is why in a meeting like this, we can conceive great ideas. There is no CNN, there is no BTV, there is no EMCA, but we are coming up with great ideas in private. Great ideas are conceived in private. Secrets of great companies. Great companies are great because of top of everything is vision. Is what? Vision. vision. They have a vision. What is a vision? A vision is like, maybe we can use another word, imagination. A picture of the future. A picture of the future. Great companies have a picture of the future they want to have. So if you are Microsoft, you will say, my vision is to have a computer in every household in the world. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What is the vision of an organization like Cricket? What is our vision? The vision is the force that drives the workers in the organization. Mm -hmm. Now, hear this. You may think what I'm saying is simple, everybody knows it. Not really because vision is not about what you write and you put in a, in a, in a, in a, in a billboard or you put in a, in a banner. It can be in a banner, but it's not in the people. <laughs> you get it? Mm -hmm. Now, the purpose of being here, and I hope in the afternoon we'll talk about it, vision must be understood by all. When you what he sees, you must also see, so that it is not driven by him. It is driven by us all. We see the same thing. Yes, sir. Are you understanding? Mm. When we see the same thing, we will react the same way at every station. If we say we are going to Johannesburg, the moment we see a billboard driving, a billboard written, Johannesburg, 100 kilometers, whew, we are finally about to arrive. All of us will have the same reaction of excitement that we are about to arrive. Johannesburg, 10 kilometers, oh my God, finally, after so many hours. The moment you see, welcome to Johannesburg, oh guys, we are here. And then, even those who are sleeping, they wake up. <laughs> Why? Because finally we have arrived. We all knew where we were going. But if we are in the same bus, you don't know where you are going. Uh, you are passing by Johannesburg. You are seeing Johannesburg, 50 kilometers. But you are not told where you are going. Somebody may get excited. Woo, finally, we are about to get there. And then immediately, some two hours later, they see that you are passing. And then it's written, Devon, 430 kilometers. When they realize we have passed Joburg, 
Ah, we are still continuing. But if they were told from the beginning, we are going to Deben, when they see to harness back 50 kilometers, they don't get excited that they are arriving. They know where we are going. When they see Deben 400, they are like, okay, nya rapus. How is they excited? Miyama wana Deben, 75 kilometers. Whew. We are getting there, guys. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everyone must see the same thing so that our drive can be the same. Our push can be the same. So we are not going to clap hands for the Palapa station all the time when we have more people behind the and say, oh, we are a success. Is that our vision? We will celebrate them and still say, guys, we are still pushing. The hundred people may be Johannesburg, 300 kilometers. We are glad we have covered 150 kilometers, but we still have a long way to go. The reason why some people are at rest in life is because they think they have arrived. Now, you must define what success means then. You must define what it means to win. Because if to you, success simply means having a credit card in every station, the moment you buy cars, the developer is like, ah, now you put it in a label, credit. <laughs> if success to you, is having a shirt with your name. <laughs> Once you are given a shirt with your name, you are like, whoa, mama, we made it. <laughs> so you rest. <laughs> In fact, with us a name, mama, we made it. We put on Facebook. Guys, we are the people. <laughs> <laughs> I am the, the girl. <laughs> we have made it. Because for you, success is a name in your shirt. For you, success is having some big premises. So the day you buy some big offices somewhere, when you look at them and there is cricket in front, wow, this is it. I've worked all my life for this. You have arrived. As they always say, success is not a destination. Success is continuous improvement. So you never arrive at success. When you have one million dollars, you can have a billion. When you have a billion, you can have a trillion. When you have a trillion, you can have quad quadzillion, whatever it is. You can be more and more and more and more. Now, when you think you have covered the whole of Botswana, there is Zimbabwe, there is South Africa, there is Namibia, there is all of Southern Africa awaiting you. When you think we have covered Southern Africa, Nigeria is calling. Too much population in Nigeria. <laughs> Sudan is calling. When you think you have covered Africa, now your education model is so beautiful that Europe is calling for it. Whoa. You think you have covered Africa and Europe? Asia says, come, India. India has a billion people. That's a lot of people. A billion people. China, over a billion too. At the exact numbers, but it's, it's millions. Maybe 30 million, I don't know. Just Lagos alone, one city alone. Nigeria has a lot of people. Until you have covered the entire earth, now, when you think you are in every continent, let me tell you what will be calling. The future will be calling. <laughs> Which future? Where you can do things today that are going to still be relevant in 100 years. So, you can sit down like Nikola Tesla. Remember? 1926, Collier's Magazine. And he said, the future is going to look like this. So, say you have covered the whole earth. This is 2019, 2020. Let's say you have covered the whole earth by 2050. You cannot come with some studies that are going to show how you'll be relevant by the year 3000. Are you capturing? Mm -hmm. The education model of the year 3000. And you have a vision that spans to that long. From 2050 to the year 3000. That's like... A thousand years deep. A thousand years deep. 
and you have built a culture for that. So you can never say we have succeeded. The extent of your vision determines the boundaries of your success. Many people don't succeed, not because they can't succeed, but because their vision is limited. The issue is not reaching your target. The issue is how high is your target. If your vision is to make 10 bula by the end of this year, you will make it. You can celebrate at least my, my goal. What goal? A lower goal. Jamaica was playing at the Women's World Cup. They lost. I think 4-1. When they scored, they are one goal. <laughs> <laughs> the reggae girls. I think they are calling them the reggae girls or something. Hey, they celebrated. In fact, after the game, they were celebrating on the beach. <laughs> Remember, they lost 4-1. It could have won a team has won a, a cup in the finals. The way they were celebrating the beach. Jamaica was celebrating like that. You know what they were celebrating? Of all their existence, they have never scored at the World Cup. It was their first goal at the World Cup. Even though they lost 4-1, they celebrated in the beach. <laughs> Now, what kind of a win is that? <laughs> Last time when I spoke to you, I said, you know you can be the best of the West. <laughs> you, are the, you are number one in your class, but your average is 39. <laughs> <And then> you, <laughs> have, you have a prize given day, you are given a, 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 a prize. Eh? Number one from five such and such. <laughs> but you are 39. And, and then, <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> and then, at the end of the year, the results come out. You can't even go to university, but you are the best in your class. <laughs> oh. Now, let me tell you something. If your competition is all these other guys around this Botswana, you have missed it. <laughs> you are going around this city. You are seeing one company has put billboards. And you are saying, hey. No, 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 I can have the billboard. You don't need billboard. It's not your competition. <laughs> <laughs> if you're discussing this after you say how to get a billboard, you are missing it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why you called me. Yes, to stretch your mind. Yeah. Mm. You are missing it. Mm. Your competition is going to be with the Ministry of Education. I know there are two now. There is, there is what? Basic and then? This year. Your budget for the year must compete highly with the budget of these two ministries. <laughs> That's when we can discuss. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? I know some of you in your stations, you can't even pay rent. Forget it. We don't care about rent for the month. We care about your budget for the year that is competing with the Ministry of Basic Education and the Ministry of Tertiary Education. Put together, if their budget for the year is 70 billion pula, your owner's credit is 100 billion pula. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? Yes. Now, you don't have to be big to see yourself that way. You don't have to be in an air-conditioned office to think that you are going places. I've said to my protégés, you can be in a one-room house, but don't think one-room thoughts. You can be in a third-world country, don't think third-world thoughts. Yes, sir. What is a third world? Third world is not countries of Africa, in fact. If I was to give you a little education on it. Mm. That world is a concept that was born to differentiate thinking levels. Mm. So the people that were coming, that's why most third world countries are what they call developing countries. Mm. They are trying to be nice and they say they are developing. Some of them are not even developing at all at all. They are not developing. Now, third world means a level of thinking that is not productive. Mm. That is not creative no initiative. 
You may be coming from Botswana, don't think Botswana thoughts. I started writing in my book, I said, look, I am a great man going to great places, doing great things, meeting great people. This was 2004 that I wrote this in my journal. I still have it. I said, I'm a great man. And at that point, if I was to tell you, at that point, I had just gotten my FD. <laughs> That is, the university did not see me as a liable person to continue in their university. <laughs> and they gave me a letter leave. When I left, I wrote, I'm a great man going to great places, doing great things in great auditoriums, meeting great people, driving great cars, and flying great private jets, and making great presentations with great bank balances. <laughs> Are you getting, wearing great clothes? You, look, I put that when they just told me. Now, naturally, when they tell you that, you are a failure. Again, so what I'm wearing, and all of that. I want you to look beyond where you are. I want you to look beyond your premises in your various places. We are grateful that you have names in your shirts. <laughs> But we are going far. We are going far. Where cricket becomes a household name. Where you don't need advert. You don't need advert. They know where to go. You don't need advert. You see, Kwa Okara doesn't need advert. Every country they scope. Every country. But the first person that started Kwa Okara did not really have a vision. He didn't know. You know that he sold Kwa Okara for a very small amount of money. If he knew, he wouldn't have sold it. I've been to the Coca-Cola headquarters in Atlanta, and I saw a vault. They said everybody believes that the, the what do you call it, the, the recipe of Coke is in this vault. Nobody knows whether it's true or not. I've been to their headquarters where I tasted the different kinds of Coca-Cola, and I saw all their bottles from the beginning up. I've been there. Coca-Cola is everywhere. You know, if you go, I've traveled the world. I'll be going to Pakistan in August. If you travel the world, when you get somewhere, you find that there are drinks you don't know their names. When you don't know their names, the safest one is Coke. <laughs> the safest one is Coke. It's simple. Do you know that right now in Washington, D.C., even in London, they have Nando's. So if you go there and you see funny names of fast food restaurant, some of them are called In and Out. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the restaurant is called In and Out. <laughs> what do they sell here? Is it even nice? <laughs> you know when you are like that, you don't want running stomach when you are going for a workshop. <laughs> you, you want what you are used to, so you enter Nando's. In fact, you will feel more African when, <laughs> when you are there, you enter Nando's. Uh, when credit is a household name, so you look beyond you can bear with the troubles of today when you know where you are going. Listen to a, a, a statement by one guy I like. He's a very intelligent guy. His name is Beer Frames. <laughs> you know what Beer Frames said? Beer Frames said, never be ashamed of your current status as long as you have a plan for your future. It's Beer Frames, very intelligent guy. I like him. <laughs> You want to see him? <laughs> He's a very good guy. I'll connect you to him. <laughs> I don't need to He said, never be ashamed of your current status. So you are not ashamed of what you are doing where you are now because you have a plan. So I want you to start thinking years from now, not where you are, and start building models. Say, for example, our tallest building in Botswana is the Eye Towers. Do you know that when the eye towers was built, chances are some of you, you never stopped to even look. But now it's a delight to look at. Are you getting it? During conception and nurturing, nobody wants that life. When my wife would be seven months, eight months pregnant, in fact, nine months, problem of nine months. 
Even the way she's breathing is a problem. The way she's walking, she can't walk fast. I never missed any of her appointments from beginning to the end with all our children. Every appointment I'm there, you are going to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> She's giving birth, I am there. People celebrate the little baby. Oh, no, no, but they were not there. Don't believe a word. Who's? They were not there. <laughs> I get you. I get you, guy. You are talking in the brain. Push. They are not there. There is blood. It's messy. But when the baby comes and the baby is well cleaned, oh, everybody is celebrating the child. But when the child was conceived, when you were going through the pregnancy, your walking is changing, your appetite. My sister, biological sister, when she was pregnant, she couldn't even drink tap water. Even bottled water, I think she was drinking sauce only. She couldn't drink any other brand. You know what I when people are pregnant, they would say, uh, what do they call it? Those cravings. Yes, they crave for certain food. I'll never forget a friend of mine in Devon. The wife was expecting. So she liked peaches. So she sent us to go and buy peaches. So we went and we bought peaches. And then we came back to the house. I was visiting them. And then she, we got in. The peaches were in a plastic. She said, oh, finally you are back. Please bring them. Don't take them to the kitchen. I'll just eat all of them. So she got the peaches. And then while they were still in the plastic, she touched the peaches. She said, they are not soft enough. <laughs> 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 the headquarters. The district headquarters of Central in Palape. And they have three-story building. And they've got air-conditioned buildings. And everyone has a company car. And then they have the headquarters in Raboroni here. That looks like Ministry of Health. And uh, the CEO's office is up, up there. <laughs> With five... PAs, security everywhere. They like that with CFOs and CMOs and all oh man. When it is still here, nobody likes it. I want you to capture the vision of cricket. Do you see where cricket is going? I like what he said earlier. It's not an amount of There is a there is a restaurant in America. It's called something. Every time I want to say the name. No, the name is not something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce the name. Chick fillet. Mm -hmm. Chick Chick fillet, something like Chick fillet. Mm -hmm. Chick fillet. Chick fillet, the owner of it, when they are hiring waitresses, waiters, they ask you what your thoughts are about the company. Somebody will come and say, oh no, me, I'm just looking for a job during these vacations. They say, we can't hire you. They say, you must have a vision that one day you may be one of the station managers. If you are here looking for a job in the meantime, you don't belong here. Imagine a waitress who's coming to be a waitress and say, one day I want to be a manager or a franchise, I, I want to franchise one of the stores. He said, if you are like that, we hire you. So, when he explains the vision of this organization, all of us must capture it to the point that in your station, you are the founder, or rather you have the mindset of the founder, even though you are not the founder. See, what many lack in the workplaces is an ownership mentality. Mm -hmm. is a miracle. So if you give me 1,000, I work to the level of 1,000. I think it's the highest foolishness in the workplace. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. If you want to be paid 10,000 and you are earning 1,000, do the work of people who earn 10,000. Mm -hmm. 
very soon your salary will increase to that. See, I wanted to enter companies and get a lot of money out of them. So I said, I must know more to earn more. So I started reading eight books. I started spending 24 hours without sleeping. That knowledge now is what I'm being paid for. Are you getting? Mm -hmm. It's foolishness to expect change of income when your knowledge is still the same. Even though they may change the price of mayonnaise and tomato sauce, change your knowledge as well. Or else you will say mayonnaise and tomato sauce, they are expensive. They are not. Your knowledge is low. There is nothing you can't afford. You know the thing you say is expensive, somebody is buying it. And they are not sweating to buy it. It's very simple. One time I was at the airport in one of my international trips outside of this country. And I saw a Chinese lady. She swiped a necklace for 150,000. In a, in, a, in a jewelry store. Swiped. I looked at her, what? <laughs> for necklace? <laughs> <laughs> necklace, she swiped. And, and, and the machine did not say declined. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't say decline. Now listen to this. We said one of the secrets of great companies is what? Vision. What do you see? Now listen to this when I talk about vision. It must be more real to you than it is to an average person. When I was talking about eye towers, in the minds of people passing by, there is just a rubble. It's dirty when they were building it, right? In fact, they would rather avoid that route because, hey, holy rule, ho ho. But every time you are passing by a construction site, you will always see something. They will put a billboard, and sometimes they will put a model of the finished building, or this is how it's going to look like. If you pass by, I think, um, in block seven now, they are, they, in fact, it's complete. It was a, a, a hospital. They built a hospital there next to Apostolic Faith Mission in, in, in block seven. When you are passing there, you will see that this is how this building is going to look like. In the mind of the architect, it's complete. The architect knows. Because the architect has seen the end product, here and they are still here they know what to do from this little dot to get this big circle so they can determine the course of action that if we are to build this skyscraper then we need a piece of land that is this big and then they do the soil testing so you will see by a construction site there is a board that will tell you who is the site manager, the architect, the electrical engineer, all of those. So they do the soil testing. We want to build a 21-story building. In this kind of a soil, it means that the foundation must go this deep. I watched the documentary of the tallest building on earth. It's called the Burj Al Arab. No, the Burj Khalifa. The Burj Khalifa. In Dubai, the Burj Khalifa. It is 1.8 kilometers into the sky. Kilometers. It's a building. 1.8 kilometers going up. In fact, sometimes when the clouds are a little down, it, it penetrates into the clouds. Yeah, it's very tall. And I've been there before. To pay to get to the top is a lot of money. And I paid to get to the top and they were touring us. They took me to the very top. When you are there, you are seeing every... In fact, Ay Tawas is just a Moha hat. Yeah, it's, a, it's very small because... You will be up 1.8 kilometers up. The lift does not just start from the ground to go there. You have to get to a certain level and then you get off, you get another one. It can't go alone all the way up. You get into another one. 1.8 is it very safe and that's why I'm driving because they now started I did not know there is something called a wind engineer 
You know, we know civil engineers, mechanical engineers. <laughs> there, is, there is wind engineer. So when I watched the documentary, the wind engineer did a model of the building, like this bottle of water. And then he now had a machine that was blowing air at the same speed of the highest wind they ever experienced in Dubai. So they were blowing it to, hear, to, to see that, will it tilt? And then they said, let's now double it or so. If now the winds one day were to increase and it's double of the highest we ever experienced here, can it tilt this building? So they did this, the model of it and tested it to say how much foundation must be on. The world's seven star hotel is in Dubai. It's called the Burj Al Arab. It is built on the what? I've been there as well. It is built on the what? It is you, you come from the land you are entering now, they built like a, an entry bridge. It is built on the water. And they have a restaurant up there. The building is like this, and then there is an attached uh, building like this, which protrudes out of the building. So they say you are dining above the water. There is nothing under it. it it's just attached to this. Thing. Let's say you have this. Under here is water, and then you have something that comes out, like, and you are eating here. Yeah, it's called eating above the waters. <laughs> In fact, Rafael Nadal has played tennis on top of that building. They, they are up there, they, were play, they, they are playing tennis up there. Now these guys had to now see, if we are building this on the water, how can it hold? It's on the water, not on the ground, on the water. How can it hold? Because they have a vision of the end product. They now have to put some systems in place that will ensure the end product is lasting. Do we all see this end product? So much so that if we are doing soil testing, you don't say we are wasting money. Are you getting what I'm saying? If we are printing names on the t-shirt, you don't complain. Because you know, we want to be this kind of an organization. When you understand the end product, the course of action along the way does not become a confusing matter. You will sacrifice your energy, sacrifice your time because you know, with the end product that you want to create, it requires this level of sacrifice. So when I told my wife, I said, look, this is what I want to be. I'm 37 years old. I can't be a 40-year-old pauper. By the time I'm 40 years old, I have a dream of what I should be at 40. It's not going to require me sleeping uh, as if I'm competing with the dead. <laughs> Some people sleep like they are competing with dead people. <laughs> you just sleep. Nine hours, you are still snoring. Oh. <laughs> Did I do a presentation on sleeping when I was here last time? No. I didn't. <laughs> if, 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 look, if you sleep eight hours in a day, eh? Eight hours in a day. How many hours are in a, in a day? 24. If you sleep eight hours in a day, it means that you have slept one third of the day. If you sleep eight hours daily, at the end of five years, you would have slept 2.4 years. <laughs> <laughs> you can do your calculation. You would have slept 2.4 of those years. <laughs> and people like say, oh no, I need my rest. So imagine, if you sleep eight hours in a day, you have slept a third of your... If you sleep, let, let's just say a week, you sleep eight hours daily. Let, let's do the calculation. A week is seven days, I get it. And then a, days, a, a, a day is 24 hours, right? So it means that a, a week has how many hours? This is 8, 168. Are you sure? Okay, 12, 14, plus 2. 168 hours. I get it. 
168 hours, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have been sleeping eight hours daily. So that's eight times seven, which is 56 hours. So if you do your ratio, it's still going to be the same. 56 hours of 168. Can you see? You have slept 56 hours. Now, it is seven days again. Let's go to it again. 56 divided by 24. 24 times 3 is, no, no, times 2 is 48 again. That's 248 and then 8 hours remaining, right? 8 hours. So you'd have slept at least 2 point, uh, this remains with what? 2.4. 2.4 days. So if you sleep 8 hours in a day, by the end of the week you have slept close to 2.5 days. That is Monday to Sunday. You have slept Monday, Tuesday, and half of Wednesday. Imagine. Without this calculation, you won't even realize that sleeping is your destroyer. I told my wife, I want to be a success. I want to be a household name. So being a household name, it takes sacrifice. It takes what? Sacrifice. So if I'm not coming home, I will tell you, of course, I will show you my plan, how many hours I'll sleep this day. If, if I sleep at, if I sleep at um, 8 a.m., sometimes I go home at 8 a.m. I sleep at 8 a.m. By 11, I'm up. How many hours is that? Three hours. And by the time I'm up by 11 o'clock, I never sleep during the day. I don't do nap. This thing that you are in the office. <laughs> <coughs> it's students who are coming and say, Now, wait, I <laughs> Those who maintain a normal schedule will not make news. So, my sacrifice along the way can only make sense when I know the vision. What are we trying to achieve? I don't know how many of you have ever heard of the guy called Elon Musk of Tesla. Elon Musk is South African, by the way. He's from South Africa. Went to America. This guy is very rich. He says, if you want to be a success, you cannot work eight hours. Minimum 12 in a day. Minimum 12 in a day. But you can't work 12 hours when you don't know what you are working for. That's why you have to see the vision. What are we trying to eat cakes and sorbet and five roses? <laughs> they can't see that they are eating their tomorrow today. <laughs> they are eating their tomorrow today by looking for uh, instant gratification. Instant gratification. People look for instant gratification, they never excel. I will give a very bad example. It is just like a young man who sees a young lady that is looking beautiful. He doesn't have the time to now warm this young lady and try to ask her out and have a relationship. They can have sex in the future after the relationship. He decides, I am hungry now. I want my satisfaction now. And then he rapes the girl. Isn't that bad? It's bad, right? Now, let me bring it to some things in your own life. You want to have salary now at the expense of a great vision tomorrow. If this young man was to give himself time, take this young lady out on a date. Tomorrow when they are married, he will have more sex. As husband and wife, isn't it? But when now he decides, I will have it my way, it will be once. One moment of rape, and then he can be caught and sent to jail. Do you realize? Yes. One salary today that eludes you of a future. 
with that salary, probably 10,000, you could have invested it and we could have done great things in the company that now, imagine if you are earning 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10 of you is 100,000. What can you do with 100,000? A lot. But because we don't see the end product, we want instant gratification. We want it, we want it. But I don't know what to do. 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 I don't know what to so she comes and daddy, can we just go out somewhere and we eat? Can it be somewhere there is a play area and then we play and then we come, we eat. I want some noodles. And she's five years old. Can you just go out somewhere? See, you can go out somewhere with a child after they say that because we want to prove you love them. But tomorrow when they are growing up and they are becoming <coughs> of age, and you have not built investments for them, they will look at you and say, you are an irresponsible father. <laughs> are you getting yeah. So once you said that, I said, oh, is that so, my baby? No problem. We'll do that next time. Okay? Not today. We'll do that. Oh, daddy, we never did that. No, but last week you went for a movie with mommy. We'll do that next time. You are not led by children. Why? They are immature. Mm-hmm. Now let me bring it to you. Don't be led by your immature desires, decisions, habits, immature cravings. You just want to change your hairstyle. Can't you manage this one, another one? You just want another shoe. You have 15 in the house. You want another one. You know that how ladies talk. <laughs> no great gratification for the greater tomorrow. When you see the vision of tomorrow, you can sacrifice today, you can take steps today that are going to lead you to that tomorrow. Now, listen to this in my closing. Listen to this. It is vision that breeds culture. How do great companies win? Secrets of great companies. It begins with vision, and now vision determines number two, culture. It determines what? Culture. culture. Positive culture influences the execution of every strategy. Listen very carefully. Negative culture undermines strategies. I'll make it more nicer in a minute. Great strategies and great teams with a wrong culture breeds frustration. We can sit and try to brainstorm. We can sit and say, as a team, are we a better people and we are a better team? But if we have a wrong culture, great teams, great strategies, we will not succeed. This is no different from many African countries. Very educated people, great potentials, but the cultures are suppressing all of that. When I was at a meeting with my CY and the president, I wanted to ask a question. Just before my turn, they, they stopped the questions and all of that. I wanted to ask a question. They say the youth compromise, not compromise, comprise a greater percentage of our population in Botswana. My question was going to be, if we comprise of the greater percentage, how come many high positions are held by old people who don't understand us? How come? How come? It's the culture. Because if you leave the children alone, hey, if you leave the children, they will take this money, they will eat it. And then the old men don't understand. When the young ones are coming with ideas, that one won't work. Let me tell you something. A Swiss watch company from Switzerland, Swiss, 
One of their members came and said to them, we need to go digital. They said, wow, <coughs> that sounds good. Sounds promising. That is not our priority now. They went for a watch expo. So this, they also showcased the digital from their own, but they did not prioritize to make them. Somebody saw it and did it. At that time, they controlled about 80% of the watch market. After somebody saw it and prioritized it and did digital than what they used to have, hear this. Within 10 years, they only controlled 10% of the market share because they could not move with the times. I will give you another example. Another example. You have heard the famous story of Nokia. The CEO said, we didn't do anything wrong. It's not doing anything wrong that sinks the company. It is being irrelevant. So you are doing things of yesterday, today, and you are saying, if it is not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> you are relevant yesterday. So you are not relevant today. Are you getting it? Great strategies with great teams and a wrong culture breeds frustration. So you can have a great team like this. Do you allow creativity, innovation, coming up with new ideas? If you have the idea that says, I am the boss, everything must come from me. Ah, really? No consultation? No accepting of ideas, refining and seeing, is this viable? So you must evaluate the dominant culture in an environment like Botswana. Dominant culture in the education system. Listen to this. Life is not lived in a vacuum. It is lived surrounded by a culture that is moving somewhere. We are all products of culture. So if you are a young man like the guys I met at the barber shop that said, oh, we grew up, our grandfathers were cheating, it was okay. And I said, your grandmother stayed because she had no breadwinner. So she stayed. But as for you, if you cheat on your wife right now, she will leave you because she has more money than you. Which culture has shaped your mind? Which culture has shaped the education industry? Which culture has shaped the tuition centers around? You must be willing to challenge the status quo and be willing to do things differently in an unusual way. How is everyone doing their stuff? So you check out the direction that everyone is taking and decide to be anti. Go the opposite direction. There goes Mr. Time. It's one o'clock. So I'm, I'm, I'm closing. And you decide to be anti. Now, thank you that my phone was ringing right here because I got something I wanted to show you as well. Now, listen to this. You know there was a battle recently of Huawei, America, Apple, and all of that. Yes. And let me show you something about that, which will interest you. Let me show you something. Technology is moving forward very fast. I told you last time, somebody can have an application and, 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 and the application will make credit to look irrelevant. They create one application, it enters, Parents are just downloading the application and they are buying exam papers in the application. While you are having premises, you are paying for rent and you are trying to get students to come. <laughs> so you have to think harder. Now, the, this is what they call the race for 5G. Right now, when you look at your phone, maybe it's written 4G on top. There was a time some few years ago, it was written 3G. Now it's 4G. Now, let me show you something. 2G was the old Nokia phones. 3G, if you want to download a two-hour movie, a 3G will take 26 hours. Now that's a lot of data. Again, you will finish before you get there. With 4G, you can download a two-hour movie within six minutes. But with 5G, you can download a two-hour movie within 3.6 seconds. <laughs> Seconds with 5G. Now, 
China is already saying they have tested their models. I watched the videos and all of that. Sir. I watched they are installing equipments for 5G in China. Who are is leading it? And they are saying by 2020 they should be ready to transmit 5G. America says and Europe and Japan, they are saying they will be ready by 2025. <laughs> now, whoever wins the race for 5G, if America wins the race for 5G, it will create over 3 million jobs and increase their GDP greatly. And if China gets it first, problem. Problem. Now, this is Huawei. Let me show you Huawei now. Huawei, however you pronounce it, in 2010, wow. they had 3 million phone sales. 2010, just 3 million of them. 2010. In 2011, they had 20 million. 2010, 3 million. 2011, 20 million. In 2012, they had 32 million. In 2013, they had 52 million. <coughs> Sorry. In 2014, they had 75 million. 2015, 108 million. 2017, they had 153 million. Last year, they had 208 million phones sold in one year. 51% of their phone sales is in China. So they don't care about the world. Because 51% of these sales, they are in China. Listen to this. Last year, Huawei made $108 billion. Last year alone. Which was an increase by 21% from 2017. They have been soaring up and up and up. Are you getting it? Yes. Now, listen to where I'm going with that. In 2018, the research and development budget of these different organizations that are into all these phones and IT, Apple, they put about $14.2 billion. Microsoft invested 14.7 billion. <laughs> Huawei invested 50.3 billion on research and development. Huawei has 188,000 employees. Of the 188,000, wait a minute, 75,000 of them, they are employed under the Department of Research and Development. 188 employees, 75,000 of them, they are just employed for research and development. And they put 15 billion to say, guys, Madikia, Madikia, research and find all kinds of stuff that we can do. How can we be the first? What am I saying? If you are going to be on the cutting edge in the education industry, you must invest in research and development and use money. If money is used for salaries more than it is used for creating the future, you don't have a future. Even the people that have been paid salary, tomorrow you will have to now cut them out because you don't have money. Only ideas of tomorrow guarantees you salaries tomorrow. Are you hearing? Mm. What am I talking about? So probably you can say, ah, this is a lot of money, sir. Ah, research and development. It does not have to be a 15 billion research. It's very simple. In your own station, analyze the trends of the students, of the client. You see, this will take personal responsibility. We are not in your station, analyzing your station, and you will have to go to records. The past 10 years, this environment, so what can I do? 
Okay, fine. Bana ba fila se chana, o ba fila meds, ba fila designs. So I'm not going to even touch anything. No se chana nothing. We focus on STEM programs. Hmm? We focus on science. We focus on math. That's it. And then we are covered. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But you cannot be told, hey, when I go to Francis Town, did I math? Right now, if you are just general, you're going to have a problem. At some point, you must find a platform where you specialize. You specialize in what? Are you getting it? You specialize in what? When students are failing sciences, they know if you go to crack it, you will crack science. But if you say any student come for, for any subject, specialists and more than general practitioners. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? A general practitioner at, uh, say, GPH, and then there is a dentist. A dentist will earn more than the general practitioner. So where are we going? And then you start, I was going to ask this question also to the president then. Can we as a nation be known for one thing? First one, let's create a legacy for ourselves. What is that legacy? Even if it is as a nation, we decide that we are a nation that is good in volleyball. So we make volleyball a sport that is liked in all schools. We now take people to train on volleyball abroad. They come back. Every school has a volleyball coach, not a teacher, coach. You know why sport is not good in Botswana? Because teachers are expected to, if a teacher likes soccer, he becomes the soccer coach at the community junior secondary school. Mm. You get what I'm talking about? Mm. There is no coach. If the teacher likes netball, kere yango na teacher coach ya netball ya no. If teacher arata mabe, kere yango drisa mabe. No, it's not going to work that, like that. Do you know why sport is big in America? In their high school, sir. There is a coach for basketball. He's not a teacher. This coach liaises with the other subjects teachers. A student who's good in basketball, he tells them, you can be good in basketball, but you need to up your marks. That's why in those countries, they can have scholarships because you are a sport person. So if you play basketball, you are given a scholarship to go to this university. Because if you are now in our basketball team, we will win. But we want you to also get a degree while you are at it. You can only be our basketball player if you are a student in Rome. So if you fail uh, your course, you are not a student, so you can't play for us. And because this child likes basketball, they will pass meds so that they can continue playing basketball. So there are scholarships that are on sports. That's why in America, sports people are earning lots of money. LeBron James in America playing basketball, he earns a lot of money. He has a lifetime deal with Nike. Lifetime. It's not like 10-year deal. Lifetime. He'll be making uh, LeBron James sneakers. Lifetime, sir. Why? Because they are told, if you are running, your running is not just a, a hobby. Uh, the sport, Nike go tiger, Nike go lion, Nike go cheetah. No, they are told you are running. So that's why the sports are not working in our environment. That's why they are not working. Are you here? Yeah. So you are going to have to sit and evaluate where are we going. If we are to be known for one day, maybe you tell yourself, we don't care about Sejana, we don't care about English, we don't care about anything. We want young people who are creative. So you develop them to be creative. I'm yet to see a tuition center that is a specialist tuition center. Even if you do general, but have an area of 
that you that you specialize on because read on this one he said we are going to put money to research on this to find how we can improve the sciences technology mathematics how we can improve creativity with with and then in the long run you are going to now outsource sponsorships for research centers you know Masiwa spoke about it he said if you can give me a warehouse we put latest technological equipment in it and young people are just coming to test their their ideas if they are viable he said that to the president yeah so imagine if you are in that direction every year when the government says we have a budget of this much they give you one billion bullet just for testing many are waiting for the government to do things the government is waiting for people to take initiatives and say we can fund you there Research and development, that's why now Huawei can't be stopped. When they removed it from Android, they didn't bother. What did they do? They created their own operating system. They said, in case they remove us from every platform. Now, what America is scared of is this. If Huawei or China becomes the first to roll out 5G, other countries may go and do business with China and leave America. You see, right now Donald Trump has reversed that decision. That no, who are we? We allow you. You can come to America. He has reversed it. When they saw that they don't care. Let me tell you how the Chinese became how they are now. This is it. They said, we are going to copy every model in the world and do it exactly like the originals and see if we can manage. You remember there was a time ago when there was um, a, a, a big issue around Range Rover and they did um, a car, I can't remember what it was, was it a windmill or something? Land, land wind. Land wind. Land wind. Exactly like Evoke. Now, you see why Chinese are big on fake product. The fake product is not because they want to be fake. The fake product is testing their creativity. They are trying to see, can I do something exactly like this? After they have done it, you know what they say? Since you can do like the best, do your own. So they study everyone and the best, and then they do their own, they take off the best, and then they improve on it. That's how now China is on top. America, the Huawei president, he said, we are not afraid of America. We are not afraid of America. What am I saying? You are going to have to now find ways to benchmark how is the American education system. Sir, one of the things that has helped me as an individual and our organization is this. I travel extensively. I spend a lot of money on travel. Some of you, you know that I'm also a pastor. Now, we don't do just like the rest of the other people around. Simple. You know why? Because I travel, I see what works well and how I can make it work. The average age in our church is 25. Young people. Young people. Many young people don't want to go to church these days. But they will want to come to the church. Because we do things that appeals to them. Ask him about our program of Lavini. When we came to the university here, we didn't come here to come and say, Jesus is Lord. University students, you are sinners. Which is what many people came here and doing. We came here, I was not called a pastor. I came here, I'm just a man. I'm going to talk to you about life, guys. I know you guys are at the crossroads of your lives. You are dreamers. You want to achieve great things. That's why I met people like me. You want to achieve great things. So be a dreamer. Pursue your dream. Those young people said there is somebody who is speaking our language. So they came. I was speaking to their lives, changing their behavior and their attitude. If you do what has been done, you will be the same as those who have been around. That's why I told you, you don't need to be bored. You need strategies that are speaking of the future. 
You need to build a strong culture that is fueling your vision. This coming holidays, we are having a leadership retreat. And in that leadership retreat, I said, I want to build an organization that is informed, knowledge, transparency, that is inclusive. All my leaders, they must be included in decision making. Are you getting? Yes, Not where one man is running the show. One man is the one who knows where we are going, how we want to do things. It must be spread abroad to capture the next generation. So in every station, you must now begin to do your own research and then you come up with a document that analyzes learning abilities in various districts of this nation. Are you getting it? Yes. Various districts, and then it can also be broken down to gender. More boys are good in sciences than girls. More girls are good in this subject. What can we do to balance it? When a school has teachers that are more female or male, the school performs like this. When the school head is a male, a female, I've not heard that before. I've not heard that before. And out of that now, you come up with your own programs. Now your programs are saying, we have realized that students are like this. <clears throat> students who are involved in sports, they perform better. So now, you are going to put sports as part of your program. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Yes, so, you build a strong internal culture now. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, my time is gone, right? A strong <coughs> internal culture.